All right, welcome everybody to our third um, session of Lunch and Learns uh, for this month. And um, you may have already, if you attended any of the other ones, you also you could also call them Brunch and Learns if it's better for your time zone. Um, so today we're going to be talking about rubrics and LTI. These are two um, other places in Sakai 21 where there's um, some new functionality. So we're going to go over that and I'll give you a little bit of demo of how it works. And then we'll have um, plenty of time for questions if you do have any questions about how um, any of the new functionality works in those tools. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are recording the session, so uh, it will be available later and I'll send that link out. It'll also be on our uh, the Sakai YouTube channel. And um, if you have a question, feel free to type it into the chat as we go. Um, I'm happy to, to try to keep an eye on the chat and, and uh, answer those as I go along. If, if you're not talking, though, please stay muted um, just to avoid background noise. Um, but uh, when we get to the question part, if you want to turn your mic on, that's totally fine as well. So, um, all right, let me go ahead and move on to rubrics. So two of the new things in Sakai 21 for the rubrics tool um, are a search feature, and you also have the option now to do weighted criteria for rubrics. So let me open that up and show you how it works. So I'm gonna go into my demo course here. Um, and we'll take a look at the rubrics tool. Now you'll notice that by default, it, it appears as locked. Um, that means that it's disabled for normal users. Students aren't gonna see it. I know we had some um, people had questions about whether or not students could see the rubric if the tool was disabled, they can. It's really an instructor only kind of tool because this is where you manage rubrics. Um, it's not where students would go to see them. They would see them when they're attached to a, a graded item or when they have feedback on the rubric in the grade book or, or something like that, but they wouldn't go to the rubrics tool. That's just an instructor only kind of tool. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so the rubrics tool now, uh, you may have noticed if, if your institution has been using rubrics for a little while, um, you might have lots of rubrics in there, or even just you as a user, if you like to create rubrics within your own sites, you might have a big long list. Um, this, if I scroll down, you'll see there's a bunch of shared rubrics on this um, server. So, uh, you know, if I'm looking for something specific, it might be a little bit hard to kind of find it in that big list. So now up here at the top, there's this handy dandy search feature and you can search by title site or author. So if it's if you want to just pull up things that you authored, you could you could put in your um, I'll just type it along say here. I can't spell. It's gonna um, filter as I type. So you'll see it's just giving me my one rubric that I authored under long site admin. Um, or if I'm looking for something um, with discussion rubric in the title. Okay, so I started typing discussion and you'll see it already filtered my results down here at the bottom, um, giving me only ones that started with that in the title. So it makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for um, if you've got lots of rubrics to choose from. Um, so the other new thing in rubrics is that there's now a weighted option for rubrics. Um, so before, let me open this one up. Um, I believe, yeah, this one is just a um, standard rubric. I'm gonna make a copy of this one because I already have this attached to an assignment. So I can't edit it. That's why it's locked because it's already um, being used to grade something in an assignment. Um, so here I'm gonna make this, I say rubric, and we'll call it weighted. So I can tell the difference. And you see this pound sign. The pound sign indicates that it is um, currently a numeric based rubric. So you'll see it looks, you know, just like the ones you may have been familiar with already. Um, you know, you've got your, your points here and actually I didn't make that grade scale very good. Let me, um, 
I'll do like 10 points for these. I changed the max points on them. I didn't change the middle points. That's a little better. Okay. Um, so that's what it might look like for a normal assignment, right? If I want to change it over to, um, to weighted, I click this pound and it changes it to percent. So now I know that it's a weighted percentage. But you'll also notice over here on the side, you've got these little weight um, indicators. So that's going to indicate the weight of each criteria. Um, so you're going to want to make these add up to 100. And you'll see that by default, it put all 100 of the weight in the first criterion. So, um, so I want, I have four things here. Maybe I don't want to weight them um, completely, you know, the same, or I could have just easily done that with my numeric base. So let's say my content is the main thing in this essay. So I want 50% of the weight for that particular rubric to be content related. Um, and then so let's say writing style is um, I don't know, 20% and um, organization is 15% and grammar mechanics is 15%. So now that they've added up to 100, um, you see these aren't highlighted in red anymore. That was letting me know that I hadn't uh, reached my goal there of 100 because you do have to have them add up to 100%. However, one thing to note with this type of rubric is I'm not done yet. I switched it over to percentage and I put in my weights, but I do have to still go through and adjust all of my points because otherwise it's not gonna score the way that you think it might. Um, the trick to doing a weighted rubric is the um, highest rating level for each criterion needs to equal the total number of points possible for the assignment. So instead of like with a normal rubric, you'd have 25, 25, 25, 25 adds up to 100. For a weighted rubric, each of these criteria need to be out of 100. So, oops, did I say 10 and then 100? Left out at zero. All right, because then my assignment is going to be graded out of 100. So that's why I'm doing that. And I'll show you, we'll attach it to an item so that you can see what that looks like when you actually grade with it. So let me say meets expectations, oops, 75. Yeah. Needs improvement. Make that uh, make it worth sixty, so that you know, with zero, it's kind of like why even bother turning it in, right? So at least they tried. They get they get a D for trying, um, trying unsuccessfully in this case. All right. So there's my points. So each of them are rated kind of out of the same um, number. But um, because it's going to weight all of my points, um, it's going to add up to 100 in the end. So let me go ahead and save this. Um, all right. So now we'll hop over to the assignment tool. And that's where I have a couple of assignments already set up. So this is my um, essay assignment that I made um, right before this webinar. Actually, oops, didn't mean to click on the item. I meant to go to grade. So I'm going to go into grade it. And we'll go to this, well, we actually have one that has a submission. So we'll go here. And for, this is a standard rubric now. Remember, I'm just showing you the difference. This is kind of the before, and then we'll look at the after. Um, I know my points don't make sense. I didn't, uh, <clears throat> I was working quickly. <laughs> but let's say this person had a perfect uh, essay. Everything's wonderful. So I'm gonna choose exceeds expectations all the way down the line. And you'll see as I go, it adds up to 100. 
So, um, you know, if I were to choose something else, it's going to change depending on my, my choice. Um, but at the end, if I select the highest level rating, it's going to be a total of 100. So, um, so that's what I want for that. And I'm going to save it and that sends it to the gradebook. Now, uh, for a weighted rubric, I need to attach my rubric to this assignment because I haven't attached it yet because we just made it. So let me attach that here and, and why not? We'll send grades to the grade book. All right, and then we'll hit post. All right, so now I'm gonna go into this new one, the essay assignment two to grade. And um, I don't have any submissions, but it doesn't really matter. It'll still go to the rubric itself. So if I pull up the rubric, you'll see that um, there's a number in parentheses. So this weight was 50. So it's um, showing me 50 out of 100 is the number of points that it would give if I choose that cell. So see down here, the total changed to 50. Um, so if I go down the line and choose the top level rating for each criteria, it's end, gonna end up adding up to 100. But you'll see how that would not have worked correctly if I had left it with the points that I had before where they were all 25, um, because it would be 50% of 25 and 20% of 25. So these numbers here in parentheses wouldn't be what I would expect for my total points to add up the way I want it to. So just keep that in mind that for those weighted rubrics, you need to change the way the points work so that the total number of points is represented um, for the assignment that you expect to grade. And then your weighting is gonna take care of making sure that it, each individual criterion um, has the appropriate number of, of points so they add up right. Um, so are there any questions on that before I move on? I don't see anything in the chat. You guys are pretty quiet this morning. All righty, so we're gonna move on. Oh, I do have one question. Okay, um, Rebecca wants to know, what if they don't choose 100 points in the far column? It could be anything. So um, let me go back to rubrics and I'll make another copy. All right, so if I wanted my um, assignment to be out of um, 10 points, 20 points, what, what would you, give me a number, any number. <laughs> the total number of points for an assignment, 25, okay. So if I want my assignment to be worth 25 points, then what I want is this final column to be all 25s. Um, okay, so let's And then I would change these as well. But you want that the total number, the highest that they can get to be the max number for that assignment. So that when it weights it, it's gonna give me 15% of 25 or 20% you know, of 25. And they'll all end in the end add up to 25. Um, let's see, Marty is saying it's similar to what can occur with the point space. Yes. Um, if you had an, a rubric that didn't match point numbers with your assignment, then you can end up with that scenario. But, um, but it's easiest uh, just for grading purposes to make it, um, if you know what you want it to be for that assignment to make the rubric match uh, when you create it. So let me see, there's another question here. Can the search function find a discussion rubric if the search term is not the first word. Uh, yes, I believe it'll search anywhere. Let me find one that where it's like in the middle. 
Um, okay, so here's one where it's in the middle. So we'll search for forum because that was like the second. Yeah, so it found anywhere where that keyword appears. And it'll do the same with the site. Um, so if you're looking for something in a, from a particular site, like your biology site, for example, you could search for bio and it'll give you um, all the ones from that site. Um, and then again, you can sort by these columns. So if there's several people that have shared uh, rubrics from biology, you could sort to find just the ones that are yours. Yeah, so any other questions on rubrics? All right, so moving on. All right, so we're gonna talk now about LTI. So there were a number of improvements to LTI in, um, oh, there's a, a question in the chat, origin site equals site ID. Um, in the rubric columns. I believe it's the site title. Um, I don't think it's the site ID. Um, site title is going to be a lot more user friendly to read. So I, I believe it's the title. Um, all right. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the improvements in LTI. There were several um, that, uh, that happened for, uh, for LTI Advantage or LTI 1.3, as you may have heard. And there's also a new assignment type um, for uh, an external tool or an LTI assignment. So first, I'm going to show you guys the new auto configure process for setting up um, an LTI Advantage tool in a system. Now, this is more of an admin kind of tool uh, setup. So instructors usually don't do this. Um, and in fact, in some cases, uh, instructors, well, actually in most cases, instructors wouldn't even be able to get to the auto configure option to be able to set it up. So it would have to be done by the admin. Um, but uh, hopefully most of you guys are admins or, or no one <laughs> so that you can pass the word along if, if somebody's in need of setting something up like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is demo this for you. We'll demo this, the tool setup first, and then I'll show you the assignment type. So if you go to admin workspace as the admin user on your system, and you go over here to external tools, um, you'll see that you've got an area where you can set up new tools. You've probably done this before. Um, so there's two options now. It used to be just install uh, LTI 1X tool, um, but now there's this LTI Advantage Auto Provision option. And what this does is hopefully makes it easier to install um, LTI Advantage tools so that there's not as much back and forth. There's a whole bunch of like um, pieces of data that you have to copy from the tool into Sakai and from Sakai into the tool and back and forth. So there's kind of a lot of cut, cutting and pasting there that, that happens. Um, what auto provision does is it does the cutting and pasting for you. It plugs in the values so that you don't have to go back and forth a million times. So, um, so if you go here to the auto provision, um, first thing it's going to ask you is for the tool title. So I'm just going to do um, we'll just call it sample. And I think it's, I'm setting up a SUGI. A SUGI tool just for my demo. So um, once I give the tool a title, and that title could be whatever you would want on your system. So it could be um, turn it in, it could be hypothesis, it could be some other vendor, whatever the, the LTI tool might be, it just needs to, you need to make sure it's an LTI uh, 1.3 tool before you try to do this. Um, so once you hit auto provision, it kind of, it takes you to this screen. And this is the screen you may be familiar with where you can tweak some of these values. So it put in a bunch of stuff 
for me. Um, and then I, I can go in here and change some of these parameters if I need to. So um, it takes you here, but, but I, haven't, I haven't quite set up the tool yet because there's something sort of unique to, um, to LTI Advantage. And there's, um, I think I've, I've, I've heard it called the who's on first issue, <laughs> which confuses a lot of people. Um, so the way the LTI 1.3 spec works is that there's this, this key, I believe it's called, uh, let's see. You have to save first before it'll actually do it. it um, I'll, I'll find it easier once I do the, um, the auto configure, but basically um, you have to get a piece of information out of Sakai to give to the vendor so that they can generate a key for you to plug into Sakai. And so the problem tends to be, well, which comes first? You don't get the value in Sakai until you get the value from the vendor, but the vendor wants the value from Sakai before they give you the key. So um, so the way that, uh, that right now you solve this is to just sort of enter gobbledygook and save it. And then it generates the thing that you need in Sakai and then you give that to the vendor and they give you the, the key. Um, so I know that's not, not the most elegant way to do it. Um, I am actually working with Dr. Chuck on um, putting together like kind of a wizard that will explain the process to users and make it a little more transparent. Um, but for now, for my demo, I'm just going to show you a demo with Sugi that already kind of <clears throat> simulates that process. So I'm going to use this button again to auto configure and it's asking me for my auto configuration URL. So this is the URL that you would get from the vendor that would allow you to install their product as an LTI tool. So let me go grab my configuration URL. So what I, I'm doing right now, let me drag it over here so you can see. Um, I'm in the Sugi admin where I got the key and I'm not going to show you how to set this up because it's going to vary by tool. So this is just as an example. This is my um, auto config URL, and this is what I'm going to paste in. Where was I? Here I am. Um, that's what I'm going to paste in here. And so it's going to begin configuration. And so it retrieved this information. And it was, you know, sending it to the LMS, and then um, it got a response from the LMS. So it, this is the tool and, and Sakai kind of talking to each other and plugging in all those values that I mentioned. So <clears throat> if I continue here, all right. So oh, and it changed my title. I forgot. I, I just hit. You can say cancel on that one screen. and it won't change your title for you. But I forgot and just hit yes. You know, let's change it back. Um, <clears throat> so it set a couple of these values for me. So it allowed, allows the tool title to be changed because this happens to be an app store. And with an app store, you're gonna choose one of many tools within the store. So you do want to allow those tool titles to be changed. Otherwise everything will be called the same thing and it would be really confusing because you've got a, a number of different tools all with the same name. Um, <clears throat> so the rest of the stuff is kind of standard from what, what you may have um, been familiar with. Um, so here is uh, the launch URL that I pasted in. Um, you'll notice it doesn't have a launch key um, like an LTI 1.1 tool. It does have a secret. And if I keep going, you see these boxes. We, we saw them before. Before it was set up, none of these boxes were selected. I don't know if you recall when I scrolled down. Um, so right now they are selected. And so the tool already told Sakai what uh, boxes to check, basically. Um, so I don't have to figure out, do I need to send usernames? Do I need to send emails? It already checked them for me. Now I can tweak some of these settings if I want to, um, particularly some of these down here. Um, these, I usually leave them alone because if it's checked, I figure the tool needs it, especially if I'm going to do anything with grades, um, I leave them checked. Um, 
and this is a, a an LTI three tool, LTI Advantage. So um, <clears throat> it it's going to receive content item or deep item links, um, and um, where it shows up, this is the part that you might want to change. Um, so you can allow it to be selected from lessons. That means that in that um, add content menu in the lesson tool, they can choose it there. Um, you can also allow it to be one of the assignment types. And this is the new LTI assignment type that I'm going to show you um, here in just a minute. Um, so you can allow that to show up as a type of assignment that a user can pick when they're setting up assignments. Um, you can also choose if you want it to show up in the rich text editor. You may recall there's a little button in the toolbar in the rich text editor. It looks like a shopping cart, and that will take you to uh, um, any LTI tools or external tools that are already installed. Um, and then uh, the privacy launch mess message, that's experimental. Um, I wouldn't worry about that one too much. Um, allow it to provide a common cartridge. This is something where it, some tools will provide like a, a common cartridge file. Um, I actually haven't run into one of them that does, so I haven't walked through all that process, but some tools apparently do. So this would allow the tool to provide you with one of those cartridges to, to bring in content. Um, so then these, you know, again, you can change them if you want to change the pop-up option. Sometimes I'll do that because some instructors prefer um, to have it in a new window or not in a new window. So sometimes I'll change the option. And then um, I usually don't do debug mode unless I'm testing um, because then you're just going to confuse people when they see the, the code that they're not expecting. Um, and so then down here at the bottom are, are all those um, fields that you have to kind of go back and forth. So this is the plat platform user. This is something that you would provide to the vendor. Remember I mentioned you could just kind of save it halfway with gobbledygook in there and, and give the vendor stuff so they can give you the key. Um, this is what you would provide. You would provide your, um, your platform issuer um, URL and then you would provide this client ID. And so this string of numbers here doesn't get generated until you save it in Sakai. Um, and so the other stuff comes from the tool vendor and it should come through automatically. Once they give you that URL, you should, they should plug in all this stuff for you. But, um, but these first two things here, if you're looking for them, if it's a tool that's not like Sugi, that um, you're running into that who's on first issue, um, this you need to save it with just some junk in there and get these two pieces of data. That's where you find them. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and save. So <clears throat> um, now it's done. So I know I paused quite a bit for uh, you know explanation, but it really does. If you kind of know once you've done it once and you kind of know what some of these tool, um, you know options are. Um, it does make it a lot quicker, a lot less back and forth, because really you just, you give it a title, um, you hit that auto provision. Whoops, didn't like it when I did that, did it? You give it a title, you um, hit the button with the auto provision, and then you um, go uh, back to, uh -oh, looks like try Sakai. I lose my internet. Can you guys still hear me? All right, folks, I'm back. I apologize for that. I know that um, pretty much everybody got kicked off um, when I lost my internet just now. Um, and I had to uh, reboot my router and um, get my computer back up and connected. So. Um, I'm recording this uh, so that we can have the last portion of the session for, um, for YouTube to have it in the recording. And I will send this recording out to everyone after, um, afterward with an apology for dropping off and kicking everybody out of Zoom. So um, the last thing that I wanted to show you today 
uh, was the, um, the assignment LTI. So um, we didn't get a chance to do that. I think I, I think I got through all of the um, LTI Advantage auto provision before my internet um, blipped out. So I'm going to go straight to um, assignments. And actually, let me go into a different site because I already have some set up here. So in the assignment tool um, in Sakai, you now have a new option. So if I go over here to add a new item, and I want to make this an LTI assignment, whatever that might be. Um, all right. So when you go down here to submission type, you can choose external tool. And once you choose external tool, you get the opportunity to select from any tools that are currently available on your system that are available to be selected in assignments. You may recall in the admin area when I was going through some of those settings for tool setup there, there was a box um, that you could check to make it available in assignments as an assignment type. If you checked that box, it would show up in this list. And you'll see, lo and behold, there's my sample SUGI um, LTI Advantage tool that I set up before I got kicked off line. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna choose that. And because Sugi is actually an app store, it's going to present me with um, you know, a list of different tools that I can choose from. So anything that's available in the app store for me, I can choose. And in this case, I'm going to choose, um, we'll do Sticky Grader again. That's the one that I did before. I'm going to call it sticky grader three because I already got a few sticky graders in here. Um, and uh, submit. Okay, so now I've selected it and I can hit go. And it wants to know can it change my assignment title? Um, I'm going to say yes because that's, that's fine. Um, and then I can make whatever other settings I want if I'm sending it to the grade book, for example, and post. All right, so this is a new one I just added, Sticky Grader 3. Um, and you'll notice, um, I'm gonna go into this one because it's already, um, I've already kind of submitted to it and, uh, and graded some things. Um, so one thing to note with the um, LTI assignment type, currently, um, once you have it um, set up, you can't actually grade it from the grade link. Um, and you have to, if you need to do any configuration as the instructor, you actually have to click on the assignment, go to the tool. And then once you're in the tool, do whatever operations you need to do there, um, whether it's grading or, or setting anything up. Um, if there's anything to be set up within the tool. And likewise, once you have some student submissions, um, like this one, for example, has, I think, a submission. Let's go take a look. I believe that it does. I go to student data. I see that I have a submission. And then I've, I've entered a score already, but I could change that to something else. I'll change it to 99 and update. All right, so that's how you would grade it because I'm grading again within the, the tool. Um, now this one, you'll notice it opened in a new tab. That's an option in the setup. Um, you can choose down here if you want it to load in a new tab or not. Otherwise, it opens within the content frame. Um, so in case you didn't catch that, I'm going to go through it again. We'll go through this one because I know for sure this one has some um, grades. So if I click on the title of the item, go to external tool. Now I'm in the tool, and this is going to vary by tool where you go to actually put a score in. But for sticky grader, I know that I go here and I look to see 
what submissions I have. And I click on a submission and I enter my score. I've already graded this one, but I would enter a score here and any um, instructions. And once I do that, it does send that score to the grade book. So if I go over here to the grade book, you'll see I've got a few columns in here with, um, with sticky grade. Let me, I'll just show my sticky grader columns. All right, so um, you'll see I've got a couple scores in here for sticky grader. That was the second one that I went to. Um, and uh, the 99 was the first one that I showed you. So they are sending to the grade book. Now I realize that in the assignment tool, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot happening here because it doesn't show you submissions. And if you go to grade, you're not gonna get to the LTI, you're just gonna get to the UI for the Sakai grader. So we're working on that. I actually met with Dr. Chuck and we're um, gonna be working on some fixes for that so that it's a little less confusing for folks if they don't quite know where to go to get to the submissions. Um, but for now, right now, um, before that fix gets uh, created and applied, just remember that you have to actually click on the, the item's name to go in and submit. Um, and that's for students as well. Students would click here, they would submit, and it's not gonna show that they've started, even though they've submitted, they'd have to go into the LTI tool to see their submission. And um, they will see their grade in the grade book though. So whenever your grade goes through the LTI, the student can go here to check his or her grade. Um, so at least from that point, it won't um, be as, as uh, confusing for folks. But just so you know that um, currently this, this part of it is in the works, we're gonna work on refining it so it's a little more user-friendly. Um, but if you are trying it out in the meantime, um, and you run into any confusion, um, those are some things to keep in mind. So um, I realize I don't have anybody actually in the session right now because I'm sort of recording this for posterity since it um, kicked us all out. But let me um, go to my last two slides for the lunch and learn. Pull this up here. All right, so, all right, so I do have a quick survey that I was gonna put out to you guys. I would love to know what exter external tools you're using at your institution. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna send out an email with this afterward and uh, include this, this link to the survey in that. But um, we would like to be able to kind of do a little investigation ahead of time and maybe set up some, some templates or some sample configurations for some of the more used uh, LTI tools, ones that a lot of our community folks are using with Sakai, um, because sometimes there are some questions about which boxes to check in that setup screen when you're setting up the tool. So, um, so if you let me know which ones are in use at your institution, then I can kind of compile that list um, and see which ones are, are the most common and then we can start with those. Um, but we can try to, to make it a little easier for folks to set up that information because it does vary so much from tool to tool. Sometimes it's hard to anticipate. Um, it's not one size fits all. So, uh, so we can try to help you out a little bit there. And also um, we do try to interact with uh, the tool vendors directly to try to smooth out any wrinkles in that integration process. So again, if you let me know which ones you're using now, or even if there's ones that you're, you'd like to use and um, are hoping to have um, integrated and maybe need a little help getting some information on how to do that, um, feel free to put that in as well. It's like an open-ended comment field. So you can type in and indicate whether it's something that you already have and it's working, or something that you would like to have, and we need to, to do some troubleshooting there. Um, another quick survey that I have for you guys is about future lunch and learn topics. Um, so I would like to know what you guys want to learn about um, so that the next time we schedule a set of these, uh, we can touch on some of the topics that you guys are most interested in. So if you would please 
fill out this survey. And again, it's just like you know, one question, what would you like to learn about? And so you can list anything that is um, you know, particularly interesting to you. And I'd be happy to try to work that in to um, our, our next round of lunch and learns. We might try to do another set of these sometime during the fall term. Um, so we'll probably do like, you know, another two or three part series, kind of like we did um, for the Sakai 21 new stuff. So, um, so anyway, please fill that out. I really appreciate the input on future topics. And um, this recording and the others from this series are available on the Sakai YouTube channel. You can go to this bit.ly link to get to the playlist for all three of the uh, Sakai 21 lunch and learn sessions. Um, if you recall, the first one was on dark mode and dashboard. The second one was on new items in gradebook and lessons. And today's session on um, LTI and rubrics. So all three of those recordings are available at this playlist, um, as well as a wealth of other information on this Sakai YouTube channel in general. Um, so I invite you guys to check that out. And um, hopefully uh, you learned something today. And, and we'll be back for the next round of these uh, next time we offer them again. So have a great day and hope you have a wonderful semester start.